Hi, everyone, and welcome to Rising Stories Podcast. I'm Kareen Sandifer, your host. Each week, I interview a business owner or author, and we chat about building businesses. And we talk about working as a boss and learning how to work through the struggles and the successes that come with it all. We share our best tools and our best practices with you. And we also discuss topics that we can all relate to, such as work-life balance, living with intention, and dreaming big. So sit back and relax, grab some wine or some coffee or water, and listen to these women share how they are rising. And I want to make sure that you are connected to Rising Stories Podcast, so make sure that you hit the subscribe button on iTunes to get the latest episodes. Also, the best and fastest way to connect with me is on Instagram or Twitter. If you have a question, go to Twitter and find me on, at Kareen Sandifer and let me know what you like and what you don't like about the show. I'd love to hear your feedback. You can also find me on Instagram at Kareen Sandifer and I love to do Insta stories. So make sure you're following me and catch some of those stories. Today on the show, I'm talking to an awesome lady whom I think needs to be my new best friend. Like, we had such a great time on this interview that I sometimes forgot about what we were talking about, our agenda, because we were just too busy laughing and sharing. It was a blast. Lindsay Ray is the author of a book called I Hate Green Beans. She explains why she chose this title. She also has a blog by that name, and that's not all, but Lindsay Ray... By the way, Ray is really her last name. I'm not just being Southern, although I love calling her that. Lindsay Ray's claim to fame is that she began writing episode recaps for The Bachelor. Back when The Bachelor was just a little TV show that we all thought would not get picked up for another season, then boom, The Bachelor took off and so did Lindsay Ray's recaps of the show. She is now a working full-time writer and writes for Entertainment Weekly, is a reviewer for the Associated Press and Huffington Post, just to name a few. Lindsay and I talk about how she started as a writer and our favorite Disney treat and about reality TV, of course. Before we get started with the show, I want to tell you that today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com backslash rising stories. There's over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, your Android, your Kindle, or your MP3 player. So join today and all the information will be in the show notes at the bottom in the description on your app. So here is my conversation with Lindsay Ray. Hi, Lindsay. Hi, Kareen. How are you? Good. Now, do you go by Lindsay Ray? Is Ray like that's your, or <laughs> is it like, a, is that a Southern thing, Lindsay Ray? That sounds like a Southern thing to me. I absolutely love that you asked me that because 50% of the time people call me Lindsay Ray because they truly believe it's a double name, like yeah. Peggy Sue or something yeah. like that. It, and my dad gets it all the time. He's Johnny Ray. And people say, Johnny Ray, what's your last name? Oh, but Ray is hilarious. my actual last name. Yes, well, like one time I went right. to a, a wedding in Texas and it was where well, I'm from Texas, but I went to a wedding and it was like Carrie Joe and Jim Ed. They got mm-hmm. married and it's like, mm-hmm. that was not their last names. So Carrie Joe is, and so, no. but she went mm-hmm. by Carrie Joe and then Jim Ed. Um, so yeah, I bet <laughs> Lindsay Ray, you do get that. And then Johnny yes, Ray. All yep. the time. And I'll just answer to anything. I, I'm on a radio show the Tuesday after The Bachelor airs up in Pennsylvania, and they have called me Lindsay Ray since I've been working with them. And now it's just too cute. I'm not going to I'm not gonna stop them from doing that. It's just too cute. I so they, that. Lindsay Ray, what do you think about last night's show? Lindsay Ray is on the line. So oh, it's I cute. I, I, I find it endearing. Yeah, it's cute. It's cute. And, and you're like, hey, that's my last name. So <laughs> right. hilarious. So you mentioned the bad, you're on a, I didn't even know this. You're on a radio show. Well, they call, (laughs) I know, random, right? They call every Tuesday morning and we talk about the show that aired on Monday night. I've been, um, I've been doing that, gosh, for maybe 
five or six seasons now with them. They're or The Bachelorette. Uh, or, or The Bachelor. Well, but either one. Bachelor, Bachelorette, uh-huh. Bachelor in Paradise. There's a jillion of them now. And There's it's so um, Jessica and Murphy on Star One or Four. And they just found me through my website and said, hey, you want to talk about it? And I said, well, sure. And they're hilarious. And half the time they can't stay up as late as the show goes because they have to get up early in the morning. So I'm filling them in and it's just fun. We have a good time. So how did you get started watching the bachelor and the bachelorette? Was that just like, did you start watching it from day one? I did because it was that silly little show. What is this? Mm -hmm. My roommate and I just were, what is this? This is so dumb. And we kept watching. And then the next week, hey, do you want to watch The Bachelor? Oh, my gosh, so dumb. Yeah, let's watch it. So we kept on and kept on and kept on thinking any day now this show is going to be canceled. And there have been something ridiculous like 25 seasons of The Bachelor I started watching in 2003, I believe. Yeah, wow. it's 2017, right. So I just watched it, and one day I wrote a little recap about it to some friends, and that just blew up into this somebody forwarded it to somebody who forwarded it to somebody. It was back when email was brand new, mm-hmm. and and the guy that was I was working with, he was our, our our IT guy. His name was Jason, and he said, "Hey, you need to start a blog because you can't keep emailing this out." I had lists. People would say, "Can I be on your list?" And mm. I had lists of thousands and thousands oh and thousands gosh. of people. And he was like, "You're clogging up our system, <gasps> and you could be fired for this. So why don't you start a blog?" And I was like, "Oh, what Whoa. now?" But he walked me through it. And back then it was blogger and it was just like a PowerPoint. You click here for title and click here for body and then you publish. And so wow. that's how I started. And then it kind of morphed into a, a website and I've been doing it ever since. Isn't that crazy? The that bachelor is. of all things. That is, but how exciting that you're like, love it. they do. I, you know, I kind of, I must Mm, I'm sort of a part-time watcher. Like I'll watch like an episode or two of a season. And then if I remember, I will watch the last one. And I think this yeah. last time I missed the whole thing. Like I watched, I thought I was watching it. It's, it's, sometimes it's confusing. Like yeah. they'll do like some towards the end, like the, evening alone or whatever on the island and then they'll do like right girls tell all or whatever and right then at the all end, of a sudden in a studio yeah. yeah and i was like when are y'all gonna wrap it up <laughs> but, <laughs> like it, it never ends it doesn't <laughs> and then they go on then they graduate and go to yep. bachelor in yep. paradise or paradise beach yes. party i don't know what they call it <laughs> Beach blanket bingo. That's my my crew. It's like it's like oh, it's not goodness. as sweet as wholesome as no, beach blanket the bingo. But <laughs> it's like there's no oh Frankie Avalon in this one. Yeah, mm. how many times can you kiss somebody? Oh, anyway, mm. I digress because I'm just like yeah. <laughs> I can't. I know. I'm not ridiculous, there, but I'm sure everybody thinks the same thing. But. You have written mm-hmm. a book, and that's why you're here. <laughs> yeah, because you wrote yes. a book, and I love the title. I'm gonna read it out. Why I hate green beans and other confessions about relationships, reality TV, and how we see ourselves. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to read this. It's not. Oh, coming you're out very kind. At the time, because we're recording earlier than release date, but I can't wait to get my hands on that. That sounds. So wrap it up for me. What do you, what's it about? Is it about reality TV or your connection? It, well, to there is a, there is a chapter in there about reality TV because at its core, the book is about insecurities mm. and I don't know who's more insecure than the contestants on The Bachelor. So there so is true. a chapter on them in the book, but it's, um, it's just about insecurities that you, that you face in your life, whether that's from growing up or in the workplace or in my case in the dating world or just 
in general digital life as we live it Mm -hmm. because we project something on social media that we may not we may not truly be because we do feel insecure so we're gonna we're gonna filter everything and we're gonna put the best hashtag and and spend 10 minutes on the perfect comment and we're gonna like everything and share everything and if that didn't happen then it's like it never happened so there i i just i it's something that i have struggled with my entire life and the reason why it's called why i hate green beans is i hate green beans is my website and that is because I ate them as a young adult to lose weight because my mom thinks they have there's some magical chemical in green beans that makes, you know, the pounds just drip off. I, I can't attest to that. I don't know if that's true, but she believes it to this day. And so wow. that's just kind of a funny little nod at an insecurity that I had with my weight growing up. And and to this day, if I see a green bean, it just, ugh, I think they smell like feet. I don't know how anybody eats them. And I've had multiple hundreds of people say, well, if you just try my grandmama's bacon wrapped green beans, you'll, and I'm, nope, 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 nope. I've tried your grandmama's bacon wrapped green beans and your sauteed and your barbecue. I can't do it. Can't do it. Can't yeah. do it. So it's just, but it's, it's hopefully it's funny. I don't want people to get bummed out and think, oh, I don't want to read a book about insecure. It's, it's funny at the core too. So, well, yeah, cause we all have them. And like you said, the main, I mean, the reality TV, it, it's all kind of coming into play. And sometimes I look back cause I'm in social media. I'm on Instagram. I'm, I do Instagram stories. And I think to myself, when I actually meet people, you know, that are of this new generation coming up, I think, gosh, there is so much pressure that is put upon mm. them to be perfect, to be, mm-hmm. or or not just to be perfect themselves, but to produce perfection. Um, mm-hmm. Like the perfect snapshot of your food. Mm-hmm. You can't mm-hmm. take a bad picture of your food and put it on there and have anybody mm-hmm. look at it. It has to be right. the perfect picture with the perfect lighting. I mean, and I fall into that trap too. It's got like, oh, that's not a good one. I need to take another picture, you know. Um, and oh, I right. think about my mom's generation and and years ago, we didn't have the luxury of taking five, six pictures because film was expensive. <laughs> <laughs> we you did had, it. You had your we eyes closed. did it. Big deal. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> yeah. I think about one of my friends. Uh, her, She has a picture of her husband as a six-year-old with a with a school picture of a black, him in a black eye. It's like when you went to. Oh, gosh. Yes. You know, <laughs> when you yeah. went to school, you uh, had, a, if you had a black eye on picture day, you had a black eye on picture should, day. And you, yeah. Yeah. Tough so, luck. And how we love that. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. we look back and go, you know, that was an. A perfect imperfection, and and it's great, um, but yeah. So I can relate to that. It, it's I can't wait to to read this. I'm I'm very excited about it. it. One thing that you said in an interview I read that said, "I'll help you tuck your crazy back in." <laughs> oh, I just love that. <laughs> Isn't it true? Oh, I need Don't that. you need those friends? <laughs> oh yeah, I need that reeling well, in. That's the hope for the book, too, is that there's so many times where I felt no one else is experiencing this but me. And my hope is, so I just put it all out there on pages. And, you know, now that it's going to print, you start getting the sweats because you think, oh, Lord, I put it all out there on the pages. Now everybody's going to read it all. But hopefully the goal is that someone else in my in my opinion and in my heart of hearts even if it's just one person who says gosh I thought I was the only one who experienced that or felt that or thought that then it's then it's worth it in my opinion and and the tucking the crazy back in I think that is just an admission that everybody has the crazy we Mm -hmm. all have the freak flags and so it's okay to fly them and if they you know come out every once in a while without you 
wanting them to, then, you know, I'm there to help you tuck it back in. More than likely, I've been in that same scenario. I've been in quite a few. Whenever I wrote the book, I thought, oh, yeah, I need to write about that one. Oh, yeah, we should write about that time I was in Alaska. Oh, yeah, I should write. And it just kept coming. I thought, wow, there are a lot of times that I've been insecure. I have so many, I'm going to have to cut stories. And that, yeah, that's a good problem to have. But also at the same time, you start thinking, huh, maybe I need to do something about my insecurities. So that's a little bit of the book too, you know, how I'm tackling them one insecurity at a time and how I still struggle with it. And that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, yeah, you've hit it on right on because we all, we all struggle with insecurities, every one of us and people Mm -hmm. that say they don't, I mean, they're lying because they Mm -hmm. have, there's some, you know, insecurity in there, but you have Besides writing the book, you've actually been a writer for several years and you've yes. written, well, you started with your blog. And so you were in, you had, a, obviously you had a day job and then you decided to do your blog with Blogger and then talk right. me through that. What happened after that? I started off in PR in Dallas and that's when I started a blog, but it's also when I migrated to a website, my, that same IT guy suggested I move over to a URL, which I think was smart. And so that's when I hate green beans was born. Then I moved to Houston and I was at a PR job in the oil and gas industry for 10 years. And the whole entire time I'm still writing about the bachelor. I'm writing about other things on my blog just because I'm I'm not lying, Kareen. I kept thinking this Bachelor show is going to end any day now. So <laughs> yeah. I probably need to have other stuff on this website that people read too. Yeah, it didn't. And so yeah. that just sort of um, snowballed into this website presented opportunities with um, other outlets. The Huffington Post was one that I used to write what we call mini recaps or reacts as they are called because I didn't want to give them my whole entire recap. So I would just do little nuggets and then they mm-hmm. would link to my website where you could read more. And then it, um, uh, opportunity with entertainment weekly presented itself. They saw that I liked recapping TV shows. So they asked me if I would like to recap TV shows for them. And I said, absolutely zero arm twisting in that. Yeah. And then I thought, um, I would like to, I'm a reader, and so I kept thinking, how can I make a little change while I read? And I had a good friend at the Associated Press, and she said, well, they're already always looking for book reviewers. You could do that. And so I submitted some writing pieces, and I've been doing that for um, about two and a half years now. So this website that started off with an email about the Bachelor of All Things has just blown up over the last several years into other writing opportunities so much so that this side business that I was doing I I had an opportunity with CBS as well and the Associated Press and Entertainment Weekly and all of that was building up to to be just as much as a full-time job as what I was doing in the oil and gas industry coupled with the fact that everybody kept saying you should write a book, you should write a book, you should write a book. So that was always kicking around in the back of my head. So one day I just decided that I'm going to step out in faith and I'm going to leave this oil and gas business and write full time. And that was in 2015. Wow. And so you just stopped and but you already had you basically already had like almost another full time job that you were doing. Correct. Yes. And I was also fortunate enough, my employer um, kept me on to do freelance for him. So my job for the oil and gas company was to go off onto rigs and do company newsletters. Hmm. And so I would still do that, but then I would write from home and submit it to him. So I still, I still did some freelance work for him for about a year. So 2016 was the first time in in all of 2017, this is the first time that I've been on my own. And it's so interesting to look back, Kareem, because I got the I got the book deal at the beginning of 2016. And well, 
I submitted it all, did not get the book deal. So all of these deals are going through and you know how that is. Mm -hmm. I have no idea how it works and how do they pick and what are we doing and these people like this, but not this. And so all of this happened and then I had an emergency appendectomy and that was the day I I got um, um, offers back from two different publishers. And so I'm laid up in the hospital bed (laughs) thinking, Lord, please save me from this fire demon in my belly Uh and um i'm getting book deals at the same time so i Uh thought that was just kind of sweet and this is a side story it was also during uh what they call the tax day floods of 2016 in houston the one so nobody could get the the tax day because it happened on april 15th yes so we had this little flash flood it wasn't little Uh but we had a flash flood that came through on tax day not nearly what it was for Harvey, but it came through and that was the day I was supposed to go home and nobody could pick me up from the hospital because nobody could get to the hospital. So we were all kind of landlocked in the hospital and they serve dinner and they serve whatever they have in the cafeteria. Guess what they served? Oh, green beans. Green beans. Oh no. Yes, they did. And I thought, you are kicking a girl while she's down. Come on now. (laughs) So anyway, I was able to have this appendectomy in peace, I guess, and recover from that afterwards and, you know, got the book deal. So then in the summer, I was able to start writing and it was just nice because I I only had a couple of shows for Entertainment Weekly. So I would do that in the evening and write during the day. And um, I turned it in at the beginning of 2017. So now I'm just kind of in the waiting process. And I know that sounds weird that it that it's 2017, but my book's coming out in 2018. Mm -hmm. But I just don't think people realize the process of how long it takes to print a book. And and it's not that it takes a long time to print a book. You have to think about it like movies. So if Warner Brothers has five movies coming out in 2017, they're not going to squish them all in... February, March, and April, Mm -hmm. they're going to spread out. And so that's what, that's what happens with publishers. They're not going to put all of their books out coming out in the summer. They're going to spread them out. So it's not that it physically takes that long to print. It's that they're being strategic. So my book is coming out in February of 2018. Well, guess what else is happening? That's when The Bachelor is on. Mm. So that makes sense. It could have come out this but you know, why not, why not do it for Bachelor, which is how all of this wonderful chaos, as I like to call it, started with The Bachelor of all things. It just still cracks me up to this day and, and how, and how weird and odd the story is, but just what fun it has been in the last couple of years to just be able to sit back and see what God is doing and how things are going. I love it. Mm-hmm. So what what would be your advice to someone who wanted, wants to be a writer like yourself, not just a, a mm-hmm. book? Because I think people, we've had people on that talk about how they've written their books. But um, I want to know, like, how did you get, because you actually are a um, career writer. I mean, you're mm-hmm. a writer for a living. So did all this just kind of fall on your lap or you just kind of, did you go looking for, I mean, I guess some of it did because you started doing the blog on, <laughs> and it was so early right. enough that things started kind of got the ball rolling and, and I don't know, were other people um, doing recaps of The Bachelor? Well, at the time that I started, it, it wasn't even a thing. And, and I remember someone sent it to Chris Harrison, who is the host of the Bachelor franchise. And he and I started emailing because I think this is, I mean, brand new, brand, brand new. And we were emailing back and forth and he would say, oh, I can't wait for you to see what this girl does tonight. And then the next second, ironically, Harrison is recapping for Entertainment Weekly And I wrote him, I said, dude, what are you doing stealing my thunder, man? And, you know, we nod, nod, but at the same time, and I mean, he would just, we would just laugh about it because it's, it's whenever, I mean, it's that transition that we're talking about between we're all buying a magazine or Mm -hmm. we're all subscribing to people in my world or Entertainment Weekly 
And then there is this shift that seems to have happened overnight because, like I said, I was in PR since 2000. And then now going through and thinking, okay, if I was my client and how am I going to publish my book, what what steps am I going to take? It is nothing of what I would have done even five years ago, mm-hmm. Kareem. Nothing. Because social media is such a drive and and digital reading is is such a thing now. I mean, people hardly even buy the paper. They hardly even subscribe for newspapers anymore. And so everybody is on is 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 screen oriented, whether that's your computer, your mm-hmm. tablet, your phone, and it's right there. And and this is just the world we live in. I'm going to be honest. We're all pretty selfish. So we're going to go to Facebook and in our feed, that's where we're going to get our news. Mm -hmm. I learned about the horrific events in Las Vegas from Instagram Oh wow! because somebody said, you know, praying for Las Vegas. And I thought, why are we praying for Las Vegas? And then, of course, I go to my phone and check CNN because that's an app that I have. And oh, there it is. And so the idea that you need to you need to see things digitally is, is first and foremost. So it surprise, it doesn't surprise me at all that entertainment weekly has an entire section dedicated to recap. And people ask me all the time, why is a recap important? Why would I ever read a recap? I'll tell you why you read it. People mainly read it because they're a super fan and they want to hear what all you have to say about the big bang theory. Mm -hmm. That's one reason. Number two, they didn't get a chance to watch the Big Bang Theory episode, so they're going to r- read what you say to see if it's worth their time. Yeah, because yeah. people's time is very important to them. And we have 17 shows on the DVR nowadays, you know, and 17 more on Netflix that we can stream. So is this worth my time? Yeah. And yeah. then, you know, the... The other one is, you know, I don't watch the, I don't watch the show anymore, so I'm just going to read your recaps. I get that all the time really about oh I don't watch I don't watch that trashy show The Bachelor but I read your recap so I can know what to say you know talk to you about the water cooler and I feel like I'm in the know for this pop culture phenomenon so everything is digital everything has to be in a feed if you didn't like it or share it or tweet it or retweet it or thumbs up it then it never happened I mean they tell us at Entertainment Weekly all the time you are obsolete after one hour mm. when your recap goes up now wow. they go up at they go up at night which so we have an hour to write our recap and then it's live wow. and so I, I watch the show from 7 to 7 30 I write from 7 30 to 8 and do all the back end stuff and post it and then they approve it and it's up by I don't know noon the next day it's obsolete wow. because you have people already preparing for this is us that's coming on tonight and ooh, we're going to be excited about it so everything you see in the feed is get excited about xyz show or xyz music or xyz movie Mm -hmm. and that's that's what i was taught in the pr world i was in entertainment back in dallas and we did movies and they say opening weekend is the biggest weekend because after that Friday, Saturday and Sunday, it's going to go down every single week. Yeah. It's going to go down. So you have to get as many rear ends in the seat the first weekend. Mm-hmm. And it, the same applies for anything. For and you've got to get them music. in there the first, you know, that first opening weekend so that they can go tell their friends. So then it'll keep Absolutely. going. Absolutely. Because if you don't. Uh, then... And where do they tell them, Corrine? They tell them on Twitter and mm-hmm. on Facebook and on Instagram and on Snapchat and a blog. Mm-hmm. So everything is just digital, digital, digital. And that's that's what I was saying, too. The, the, the publication, the publishing house said, hey, think of, you know, what kind of magazines and newspapers would you like to be in? And I thought, oh, that'd be so cool. And then I thought, when's the last time I bought a magazine? <laughs> it, was at the, it was at the airport, yeah. you know, whenever I was flying wherever. Or it, it's it's just so interesting today how, I mean, people hardly read books anymore, an, a, an actual book. Uh, everybody, you know, the majority of the people are reading it digitally on a tablet because yeah. that's easy. Well, I'll say that yeah. I I do Audible, so I like 
mm-hmm. listening. I mean, I really, mm-hmm. literally, I have three books that I have to read by the end of, like, I have deadlines. Cause, you know, I mean, I interview authors and I have a, I'm yeah. in a book club and, you know, I'm in another club that, you know, we read, you know, so, uh, help, help books, self-help books and leadership books. So, I mean, I'm thinking, oh, can I get it on Audible? Because I'm on the car. And so it's easy yeah. to pass the time and listen and rather than than read. But, um, yeah, it is changing, changing. Everything mm-hmm. is changing. So speaking of app you, were, you mentioned the CNN app. Is that your favorite app? On your phone. It's one that I go to. It's one that I go to a is lot. It? I I would say yes. And Instagram is one I go to a lot Love too. Instagram. But um, a a random one. This is me being a total dork, Kareen, and I'm <laughs> just admitting to your listeners that I'm a total dork. I'm a Disney fan. I wouldn't call myself a Disney <gasps> freak, oh. but I'm a Disney fan. And I um, was a Jungle Cruise skipper. I worked at Disney World right out of college for Cute. six months and. So much fun. So I I visit Disney World every once in a while. And there's an app that shows the wait times of all the attractions there. And I'll check it every once in a while going, "Mm, I wonder how long people are standing in line at Dumbo. Not while you're there. Yeah. Just any time. No. Right. (laughs) Bless my heart, you know. That is so cute. I I think I'm fascinated. I do it a lot in the summer because I'm fascinated that people would actually stand in a line for 120 minutes to ride this brand new ride that's in Animal Kingdom. It just fascinates me. I don't know why. I'm weird. And then I'll text it to people like a dork (laughs) and say, hey, Peter Pan is 90 minutes. You may (laughs) have another job there if you can get maybe on another social media, like do it on Twitter. Just go ahead. Just. Yes, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna update you randomly Do on what's happening. Do update people randomly, <laughs> and then they'll start following you on Twitter because you know, I mean, I don't have things that pop up on my phone very often, but they could just follow you anytime you tweeted something that it would pop up. Right. You know, only thirty yeah. minutes for Dumbo, and then put right. in some, and then Hurry. write something about the write write give a little recap of the Dumbo ride. <laughs> That would and be fun. I could do it. I could do it. I'm writing fun. that down. Yep, do it. I think people will be like, let's just find out. Let's just find out what she has to say today. <laughs> I mean, obviously, you've written all the rides, probably. And you know every oh, inch yeah. of that area. So maybe yes. you can do a recap and, and say, and mm-hmm. don't forget to get your dole whip, dole whip at the end. You know. <laughs> I love that you know that, Karina. I love that Dole Whip stand right there by the Dumbo. Isn't it right there by the Dumbo ride? It's by Aladdin, which is like Dumbo. Okay, it's by Aladdin. Oh, my gosh. So fun. Well, I kind of know, like, uh, the next time I go, which will not be anytime soon because... My family, I took my family and they, we all decided we are not motion people. We're not. Okay. We, they would not, they only went on Tower of Terror once with me and that's my favorite ride. I could already, I mean, I've only been on it once because no one else would go on it with me again. Oh. So I've been on it once, but I know it's my favorite ride. I loved it. Uh, we did. Did you know it's a different, it's a different ride every time you ride it. What? Yes, oh. it's a different drop. It's a different drop sequence depending you- on you know which elevator you're in and what time of day. Okay, mm-hmm. will you go with me sometime and let's will. go ride yeah, Tower of Terror because like <laughs> five times, um, <laughs> and maybe you can hook us up with some some freebies. I just want to go to that. Yeah, that ride and go to and get some Dole Whip. That's okay. That was done. one of my two favorite things. That and and I know exactly where I got it, and I'm like, I want to come yep. back. I only got it once, but I'm just one of those like, when I've had something that's that good, like mm-hmm. a good ride or a good Dole Whip, I'm like, mm-hmm. I, I want it again. So we'll do that. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Yeah. So yeah, do do the tweet thing. Yeah, like Disney. You need to call it something fun. That would be that would be cool. So what oh, okay. are some three favorite things that you're loving these days? Oh, that's a great question. Um, well, I'm loving, I'm loving Netflix. 
and who doesn't love Netflix, right. but I just, I just love the idea that it's there waiting for me yeah. all the time and it's not clogging the DVR because I have this weird need to keep the DVR low because I'm very nervous that something won't get recorded because mm-hmm. I'm a TV lover. So I'm loving um, Netflix. I'm loving this um, lemon ice cream something or other that Chick-fil-A is serving now. You is should it- go try it. Some It's like a Frosty, but lemon. You know how Wendy's has a Frosty mm-hmm. that's sort of like ice cream that's been mixed. It's so, it's smooth. And it, anyway, it's some sort of lemon ice cream something from Chick-fil-A that oh. I love. And um, only because this is on my brain right now because I'm teaching, but I, the a Bible study that I'm in, the material, I absolutely love it. It's called The Amazing Collection. And you do a book of the Bible every single week. And it's a three-year study. Mm-hmm. Wow. And I'm absolutely loving it. Mm-hmm. Love it. So you do a book each, mm-hmm. a book of the Bible each e- week. Each week. Each week. Yes. Oh. Each week. I know. It sounds so intimidating and so daunting, but what is wonderful about it is the purpose of the whole entire study. Of course, you're not going to be able to absorb all of Romans in seven days. Mm -hmm. So you're supposed, they take you through, they'll always do a character and then they'll do a a critical passage and then they'll do um, a theme. So each day is different. And the point is by the time you leave the study by the time you leave the book if someone comes up to you and says now what's Romans about again you'll be able to pull something from your memory and you know about the righteousness mm-hmm. of God and and Paul is not ashamed of it mm-hmm. and um and you also m- memorize a verse every single week what they consider the quintessential verse of the entire book so by the time this three years is over you'll have one verse from every book of the Bible memorized, which I just think is the coolest thing ever. Wow. I love that. I think that's a Mm -hmm. really, uh, and is it an organization? Can they come to Nashville? Is that an organization, the amazing collection or is that? It's, it's um, actually the, it's the study is called the amazing collection and it's a bunch of women who just wrote it a very long time ago because there are videos that come with it and oh. they have their, you know, shelter pads and their oh, you know, hair, very <laughs> late eighties, <laughs> early nineties. Oh. But it's, it, so it's been around for a while and um, a lady at our church just kept saying, I think we need to just, just look into it, just look into it, just yeah. look into it. And our women's director Rennell, she did one day. Um, I I don't think Rennell was just, she was kind of discouraged with women's studies because she felt like, gosh, I feel like it's the same thing over Mm -hmm, and over again. mm -hmm. And um, there's also this need and this want that she had, and I did too, to study your Bible instead Mm -hmm. of, we're going to study these women of the Bible because you're women, and Mm -hmm. we're going to study touchy feelings because you're a touchy-feely people. So we just wanted to know, what does the Bible say about Genesis? What does the Bible say about Judges? And it's, it's very, very cool that you, when you study it like that, I mean, I know some people have done Bible in 90 days, which is even more of a bird's eye view. But whenever you take three years to study Genesis through Revelation, it it's wonderful how you can take what you just learned and then it points to the cross and it points to the cross and it points to the cross. And it's just really, really neat, especially studying all the minor prophets and major prophets in a row just what they all said that was the exact same over and over and over and over and over again. And all this beautiful imagery that just points to uh, the coming savior. And it, I just, I love it. And, and I'm, I'm a big proponent for scripture memorization and I just became that way. I think it was something that I always said, Hey, we should memorize scripture. That's a good thing. And, Mm -hmm. And and then kind of left it at that because I know John three sixteen and um the song you know twenty third Psalm I'm done, and um it was, was on my heart this summer because we take a break during the summer so I wasn't in the Word like I was the previous semester and 
um, Paula, the same lady who who said, "Hey, I think we need to we need to look into this study because she had done it before." She said, "Well, why don't we just memorize our scripture, just go over it to where it's in our head?" Because I've read that if you study something and review it 100 days in a row, it's in your brain like the ABCs and the Star Spangled Banner, hmm. where you don't have to. I mean, of course, we need to think about what we're saying, but you're able to recall it. You're not just memorizing it real quick because you have to say it in front of the group that night at Bible study. Yeah. yeah. So we did that over the over the summer. And it was it. I mean, just kind of life changing. I don't mean to be dramatic, but it really was life changing to know that I have years one and two down. We just started year three and um, I'm having I'm having a blast and it's it's incredible incredibly encouraging to me how many times I'm pulling those verses that I know by heart now so much so that it's it's what I feel that I need to do is is memorize greater passages like all of Romans or all of Romans 12 or mm-hmm. all of Psalm 1 or Psalm 3 so that's what I'm doing now there's a wonderful this is an app I can't believe I didn't say this Kareen um scripture typer Scripture typer, scripture. and it helps you memorize. Typer. Ooh, typer. T-Y-P-E-R. Typer. Yes. Okay. And I'm it gonna, helps you do memorize. I, ne- mm-hmm. I need all so the you, help I can get because I'm terrible me, I about memorizing too. stuff. I mean, I could sing a me song. Too. I could probably know all the songs. And I the other day I was talking to another guest, and we were ca- talking about uh, the – Speaking of Entertainment Weekly and all that, the uh, IMBD or DB, whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'm mm-hmm. like, I was that to my husband. Like when we would sit in the movie, I was like, oh, that director's directing this again. Oh, you know, the, or <laughs> he's directing. And he's like, how do you know his name? Like he's, oh, the, I was like, oh, the director from The Help is, is, is directing this film. And he's like, who is that? How do you know his name? I'm like, I don't know. I just do. But for some reason, when it comes to something like this, like scripture, it's like a brain block or something. I don't know. I know. I know. So I need it to- does help you, though. It, it can, it, you, so you can type it out just as you see the words. You can type it out or it leaves blanks where Ooh. you have to fill in the blanks. I love that. Or it'll make you, it'll make you type it without any kind of hint, and it just turns red when you've messed up. I love that. It's There's great. A, my my one of my favorite apps does something similar, but it's teaching you how to speak French, and it Ooh. then you like say it. So like they should put that in there. They should do the audio too, because I have to say it, and then if I say it into my yes, and it's uh, it'll go eh, or you know <laughs> it'll be like you're learning French yeah. just for fun, just for fun, just because oh, I, I already can you know say Spanish. Something? No, I. I Oh. I, I cannot. It, like I said, it gives me the ant. Eh, like you don't, say, you're not saying you're right. I can write it and read it, and I can. But then it's like, no, that does not. That it. I, it all sounds like Spanish, I, probably, because I I can speak Spanish fluently. I'm a native speaker, but oh, uh, uh, I wouldn't and, know if you were what you were saying in French anyway. I would just yeah. go, oh, how pretty. <laughs> That's great. I'll practice. Good for I'll you. Practice. But anyway. Yeah, so oh, that's a great app. I'm going to write that down, Scripture Typer. Mm-hmm. Thanks so much, Lindsay, for being on. And, and this has been a fun hour. It's been fun, Thank fun, fun you. all around. And um, who knew our mutual friend, Beth, you know, connected us. And yeah. Yes. Awesome. So Wonderful. Thanks. And we'll look forward to reading your book. Thank you so much, Kareen. I appreciate it. See, I told you she is all that. I had so much fun and I hope you enjoyed listening to our conversation. I want to give a quick shout out again to my friend Beth for connecting me to Lindsay. Thanks so much. And did you know that Lindsay is also a speaker? So if you or your group or a church is looking for a speaker, check her out. I will have all of her information on the show notes at kareensanderford.com and also a link to her website down on the podcast description. And don't forget her book, Why I Hate Green Beans, will be out February 2018, so in a little bit. So check it out when it comes out. I'll have all the links to how you can get a pre-order of her book. Please consider supporting Rising Stories Podcast by purchasing books and products mentioned on this show. 
Thanks for listening and keep rising in your own story. 